Assalamu alaikum everyone. Hope you guys are doing well. So this is the final good luck message and some tips and tricks basically that you guys need to know. Uh, so first of all, I just hope that you guys are, by now you guys are done with your preparation. If you're not, you should be wrapping things up. This is not the time to maybe to test yourself. In fact, do not put yourself in a testing position. Uh, because if you do that and if let's say god forbid you're unable to solve a question you're just going to go into a state of panic and you'll just end up forgetting things that you already know okay so it it will basically turn out to be counterproductive okay now before i start i just want you guys to pause this video do a quick stationary check make sure that you have your pencil scale eraser sharpener uh, you don't need a protractor for AS, but you know, just to be on the safe side and uh, make sure that you have a calculator. Make, in fact, ideally, I would suggest that you have two calculators, you know, just in case if one stops working. Although if you don't right now, it's okay. No need to panic. Uh, one calculator is enough, but just make sure that, you know, before you start your exam, you reset your calculator. I'll talk about that in detail also. Inshallah, I have my notes here just so that I don't forget anything. So uh, when you get up in the morning, just make sure that you have a good, healthy breakfast and make sure also that you get a good night's sleep. That's very important because in math, you need a fully functioning brain. I've mentioned this time and again that sometimes, you know, we're just unable to solve a question, not because we don't, we can't understand it, but just because that we're, we're not well slept, which is why our brain is not fully functioning. Okay. It's not like you're not aware of the concept. It's just like, it's just that you cannot recall or you cannot uh, basically process the information and that is due to lack of sleep and which is basically results in your brain not fully functioning. Okay, so sleep well, uh, get uh, get up early in the morning. If you've slept well, if you haven't, then, you know, get at least a six, seven hour sleep and uh, make sure that you have a good breakfast. Uh, but just don't do something that's out of routine. If, the, if there's something that you're not used to doing, then don't do that. You know, now is obviously not the time to experiment. But in any case, make sure that you're well hydrated and make sure that you carry. I don't know if you can, but if you can, that's great. But make sure that you carry a bottle of water in the exam. If not, then uh, I'm sure there's water available. So keep yourself hydrated. I know it's very hot and, you know, hats off to you guys. Uh, giving exams in such uh, hot weather. So you have to take good care of your health. Okay, now when you get the paper, also before before that, I just want you to not, um, to kind of disconnect yourself. You know, now is the time to also disconnect yourself from people who are constantly discussing the paper. I know there are some variants that, that are out. People are going, people are losing their mind over it. But uh, uh, my advice to you would be to just completely disconnect yourself from all this. It's, uh, it's, it's irrelevant. I mean, it's white noise, honestly, at this point. It's not going to have a major impact on your preparation. And uh, there's no need to discuss about what the threshold is going to be like, you know, whether the paper is going to be easy, difficult. All that stuff is ir irrelevant. I mean, it's not in your control. What's in your control is how you make the most of the hours that you have left. Okay, so when you get the paper, just make sure that you start with the easy stuff. Now, you know, there... No matter how, there are some topics that no matter how difficult a question is, it's still very easy. Okay, and I'll mention those topics. That topic is usually binomial. That topic is usually quadratics. That topic is usually, although not all the time, but sometimes even APGP has a fairly straightforward question. Okay, now there are other topics also in, in which have some pretty straightforward concepts, like for example, differentiation, integration. So what you really want to do is you want to go through the paper first. You want to identify the easy topics. Uh, the topics that you are the most confident in, you want to do, so you want to attempt those questions first before you move on to the next one. Why? Because remember, there are two things that will basically get you across the finish line. One is concept and the other is your confidence. Okay, so you could have all, you, you can have all the concepts in the world, but if you're not feeling confident, you know, you're just not going to be in the right, you're just not going to be in the right state mentally. And just like that, if you have all the confidence, you know, if you're overconfident, but you don't have all the concepts, then obviously that's good for nothing. So you need a bit of both and you, you will get your confidence level high by attempting the easy questions first. When you know that, you know, you've secured, you've secured so many marks, then you will be, free, you will feel far more confident when you approach the difficult questions. And obviously then the probability of getting those questions right will go high as well. Okay. Now also show your working. I've discussed this multiple times in multiple streams that uh, we've gone over the examiner report that the examiners clearly want to see the working. So for example, if you're solving a simultaneous equations, make sure to show your working. If you're solving a quadratic equation, make sure to show your working. And the way that you do that is very simple. You write down, uh, you write down the quadratic formula with the values plugged in, and then you can use your calculator to check your answer. We'll go over that also in a minute. And uh, if let's say you're solving a quadratic equation by factorization you need to do middle term breaking you need to show that so basically long story short this is i don't know why students complicate this so much unnecessarily the idea is that you leave no evidence you give the examiner no evidence 
to say uh, to uh, to basically show that you've used a calculator it's really as simple as that so put yourself in the examiner's perspective uh, in the examiner's place and see uh, just by looking at your working that uh, does this does it feel uh, that can you conclude that the student has used a calculator if you can that means you haven't shown enough working if you cannot that means you've shown all the relevant working okay but however i am i've always strongly advised my students to check your answers using a calculator especially if you have one of these and i've made multiple videos on it i've shown how to use it in my live streams also that there's so much that you can do and you know all these things will get your confidence level high so imagine that there's this five mark question which is area under the curve and you've checked your answer and you know for sure that it's correct so how confident you will feel. So make sure that you do that. And uh, here's a list of all the topics that uh, you can, uh, basically all the topics that you can use this calculator for. Number one is simultaneous equations. You can check your answer for simultaneous linear equations. Number two, quadratic equations. Uh, quadratic inequalities also. Okay, so if you don't know how to use it, just write on YouTube. You'll find, even if you don't find my video, it doesn't really make a difference. Just watch any video, which helps you understand how it's done. You can find out the gradient of a certain point, you know, which will help you find out the gradient of tangent normal you will find out uh, integration within limits which will help you find area under the curve you can use that to you find volume also and there is also trigonometric graphs for you know that table feature i have videos on it you can you can check those out but if you don't find my video just don't lose your mind watch any video which helps you understand the concept that's the idea here okay now I've noticed that a lot of you especially when it comes to uh, functions are always looking for shortcuts okay so that's, it's never going to help. You know, if there was a shortcut, I would probably be, not the first one, but probably be, uh, I would, I'd give it to you as soon as possible, okay? But there isn't any, sadly. That's the case. There is no shortcut. So please don't look for shortcuts with functions. I've said this time again that you have to get friendly with the function, okay? You have to get friendly with the question. You have to sort of uh, plug in a few values. You have to understand what the trend is, especially when it comes to finding range. And the function is not a straightforward function like a trigonometric function or a quadratic function. But especially when it's like a rational function, you have to get friendly with it. You have to start plugging and value, see what the trend is, and then with the help of that, identify what the range is going to be. Same goes for domain, same goes for range, same goes for composite function. For composite function, however, there's a trick, and I have a dedicated stream on it, which I will advise you to watch, and I will also advise you to watch the stream that I have on functions if you find yourself struggling with it, okay? And always be open to the idea of trial and error. Uh, if sometimes the examiner is only uh, basically, sometimes the question is designed in a way that there's no formula, no trick, no nothing. It's just common sense. And uh, that common sense, or maybe the question requires just a bit of trial and error. So make sure that you uh, keep that in mind. And also, sometimes when you're solving a question, like, for example, if you're solving a disguise quadratic and you have to use substitution, so make sure that you mention clearly as to what substitution it is that you're doing. And sometimes when you're solving, let's say, a functions question, and you've ended up with multiple values of x. So make sure that you read the question carefully, see what are the values of x that can be accepted and what values of x that cannot be accepted. You know, sometimes you get multiple answers and this happens not just in functions, happens in binomial, happens in AP and learn to take hints from the question also. Like for example, sometimes the question will say, find the positive value of a, which means that there's got to be multiple values, maybe one positive, one negative, which is why the question is telling you to find the positive value. And that means that towards the end, before you find out the positive value, you are likely to end up with a quadratic equation because that's the only way that you can get two values, one positive, one negative. So, okay, so look for that. Maybe sometimes the question will say, find the non-zero constant, which means that in the end, there's got to be a value which is zero. That's not the value that you want. You want the other value. So that means if in the end you're getting a value that's not zero, you've probably done something wrong. Okay, so learn to take hints from the question and you'll only be able to do that if you are reading the question carefully. So my advice to you would be that read the question at least twice. And you know, when it comes to uh, questions such as equation of circles, make a rough sketch, okay? I've seen people... I mean, I don't know um, why they do it. It's just practically not possible. Even for me, you know, I've, I've been teaching for a while, but even for me, if I don't make a rough sketch of, uh, of, what exactly, of what exactly the question is telling me, I'm basic, I'm not able to solve the question because you really have to dive deep and see what's going on to be able to solve the question. So please don't, I mean, this is not a daredevil show, okay? You, you're not, you have nothing to prove here. The examiner is not gonna send you, give you an honorable mention that also oh, and so person was able to do it without a sketch. No, just do whatever it is, whatever it takes for you to fully able to understand the question, to give you a better perspective and then solve it. And you know, this is something that's mentioned in the examiner report as well. I've shown you guys multiple times that the examiners say that students who made a rough sketch were able to better understand the question and obviously were able to get correct answers as well. Okay, now, 
Uh, yeah, and also for questions such as functions, like for example, if the question is asking you to find out the range of a quadratic function, for example, if the question is asking you to find out the range of a trigonometric function, it's important that you make a rough sketch. And you know, you 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 can just use your calculator for that. You don't really have to. Uh, you don't really have to. Um, as in, you you don't really have to make it like to pinpoint accuracy that's obviously not necessary just use your calculator and that will do the job for you okay also make sure that you're in the correct mode of your calculator before you start make sure that you reset it so for example if you're solving a circular measure question make sure that you're in radian mode if you're solving a, a quadratic a trigonometric equation where the range is in radian make sure that you're in radian mode okay and then once you're done you're solving another question where you're supposed to use it in degrees just make sure that you reset it simple as that okay check as you go along so you have one hour 15 minutes it's i don't think it's possible for you to leave enough time to check towards the end and you know if you check after completing the paper first of all there is no guarantee like i said secondly to sort of re-familiarize yourself with the question it's going to take you a while whereas when you're in that moment you know exactly what's going on in the question and you can if you've made an error you can fix it there and then however if you do that towards the end you'll have to sort of think that okay what did i why did i do this or what's this for what is this so it's going to take you a lot of time okay so check as you go along don't leave time towards the end because you will not have time towards the end there is no guarantee okay and use all the calculator features that i mentioned earlier to check your answer okay now please don't do this, that you do your paper in pencil. I mentioned this also multiple times in the examiner report. They've explicitly mentioned that when students do it in pencil and then they overwrite it with ink, it's, uh, it's very difficult to read it because the papers get scanned. So remember this rule that when the papers are scanned, your handwriting becomes, you know, the quality just drops by 10%, okay? So if your quality is already, let's say, not up to the mark and it drops by 10% after scanning, then, you know, you don't want to, uh, make it difficult for the examiner. Okay, so remember, the examiner is not your friend. The examiner is not your teacher, you know, whereas your teacher might make that small extra effort on your behalf to sort of look where, look for where the answer is or to sort of, uh, you know, if you haven't expressed something clearly, the teacher might know you personally and say, okay, I know the student knows this concept very well, so I'm going to give him or her the mark. But the examiner won't do that. For the examiner, you're just a number, okay? The candidate number is all that the examiner has, and that's all uh, that the examiner is basically... I mean, they, they, the examiners have multiple copies to check, so, you know, it's... it's don't do that. Don't don't think that the examiner will do anything on your behalf. Obviously, they're not going to do that. And also, if you get something wrong, please don't overwrite it. This is also something that I've shared multiple times in the examiner report, that the examiners don't want you to overwrite something. They want you to just cross it out and do it on a, on a separate page. There is an extra page towards the end, and if you want, you can also ask for extra sheet. Also, uh, on the diagrams that you're given, like, for example, circles, for example, um, functions, or circular measure, whatever it is that you have to, I mean, do scribble on the, do annotate on the diagram that's given to maybe if, you know, sometimes you have to do that in circular measure to identify what angle it is given, what angle it is that you want. You know, you might have to draw multiple triangles, but do that using a pencil so that if you want to, if you get it wrong, you can erase it. If you do that using a pen, you know, that's it. I mean, you, you can't erase it. Now you'll probably have to ask for another question paper. And, you know, there's a very long procedure for that and you'll have to do all the work all the working again as well. So don't do that. Don't take any unnecessary risk. Use a light pencil so that you can erase it if necessary. Also, like I said, don't worry about the threshold. Don't worry about the leaks. Uh, just, just disconnect yourself from social media. I mean, the reason why I'm saying this again is because it's very important. And I see a lot of students, uh, you know, making this a bigger deal than their own preparation, which obviously is, is a silly thing to do. So yeah, and uh, your paper will be on Friday. I understand it's a PM paper, but my advice to you would be is uh, don't miss Friday prayer. Um, find out where it is, um, where you can uh, go for Friday prayer, where, you know, there, there are some, uh, if you're from Karachi, I know that there are some mosques in which the prayer is at around 1 p.m., 1.15 p.m. I know the reporting time is 1 p.m., but, you know, uh, the paper starts at 2 p.m., so just make sure that you're there, you're at the venue at, at least at 1.45, okay? So don't miss namaz for that. That's what my advice to you would be. Not just Friday prayer, but also Fajr prayer. That's what I would suggest. You know, pray for yourself, pray for your friends, pray for all your teachers and whoever it is that has been part of this journey with you. Uh, it's it's a big day and, uh, you know, just get the 
get the most out of it as possible. And also remember, I said this earlier in real also, that stay away from people, extremely positive people and extremely negative people. At this time, you should just be on your own, really. You, your notes, and that's it. Don't solve any past papers. Don't solve any mocks. Just review your notes. That's the max that I would suggest. And also, I cannot emphasize on this enough because I know, I mean, I hope I'm wrong this time, but I know a lot of you will reach out to me and tell me that, sir, I just couldn't understand this in the exam. I get it now, but I don't know why I was unable to get it in the exam. I really hope that's not the case this time. So that's why I'm emphasizing on this as much as possible that please get a good night's sleep. Okay, so that's it. Uh, good luck to you guys. I hope every live stream, every piece of content that I made help you guys and you guys inshallah do extremely well in the actual exam and good luck to you from me and my team so take care there will inshallah be mocks for m1 s1 there will be streams for m1 s1 p3 also so don't worry about that and yeah that's it take care see you in the next one allah hafiz